hi we are caroline and leah from the simplicity sisters we are back together making another video with a topic that is minimalism motivation so how do you find your motivation how do you stay motivated and also what happens if your motivation changes from minimalism and what is that how does that affect you right so we were so first of all it is important to find the reason that you're doing it. And I think anyone would say that's the first thing you should do because if your only motivation is to get rid of stuff, that's not really sustainable as a <laughs> as a reason. And you're gonna have to keep to, doing it your entire life. So it needs to be deeper than just decluttering and just to make your space a little bit neater. Right, just how a clean house is not good enough as a motivation. You want a clean house because you want a happy family or a healthy family or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, It's not enough to say I'm gonna sacrifice this much time and this much work just to keep my house clean. The, the reason you have a clean house is because you want your family to be happy and to live a happy life in it, right? Right. So it's the same thing with minimalism. You really need to tag down why you're doing it. That was the biggest shift for me this, because I think I've said in the past that I had done bouts of minimalism before, but the biggest shift for me this last year was, um, just realizing that I could not go on the way that I was going on and that I wanted my family to have more of me and not just have me exist as a house cleaner and a, you know, dishwasher and a whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to have more time with my family and to spend less time just over the drudgery of housework and stress over the mental load of management. Mm -hmm. What was your motivation? I mean, mine was mostly mental clarity and just wanting to have more time. But just, I think overall, I just felt so discouraged and I felt like I did not have confidence that I was being an effective mother and I wanted to have more power almost like as a mother. I wanted to be able to accomplish my goals, like all of them as a parent um, and a housekeeper and a wife and all of the roles that I fill. I wanted to do them better. and. Overall, I just felt like I wasn't doing them well. I think so I we both felt the like the, felt the house was the manager and we were the servant. Definitely. Instead of being the manager of the house. Definitely. Which is the goal. <laughs> right. <laughs> that and you are in control and in management of your possessions in your house and that they don't control you. Right. And it was definitely, it was definitely spiritually based too. Like I don't want my stuff controlling me. Yeah. I want to be in control mm -hmm. of my stuff. And if I can't be in control of my stuff, then I have too much of it. Just the, you know, be faithful with with little and the Lord will give you more. Right. And I was not being faithful with what I had. And I yeah. still, I'm working on it and I'm okay with that. But I'm still not doing great with the amount that I have. I still have too mm -hmm. much. So we're continuing on. But that is my motivation mm -hmm. and your motivation. And the next step is so what I was, how to stay motivated. Right. And so I think once you start to reap some of the benefits... I think it is very motivating. It has been for me. Like once I've felt the difference in our home, once I've experienced cleaning being so much easier, once I've seen my family sort of get into the minimalism groove and be content with it, you know, we've all started making our decisions a little bit more with that mindset. Um, critically? Yeah, critically. Like just thinking big picture rather than just small picture. Asking why are we buying this? Why would we buy this? What if we didn't buy this? All of those questions that come up when it comes to evaluating stuff before it comes into your home, we've started to reap the benefits of that to have just more more time. We have so much more time. Um, feeling more effective as a wife and mother, feeling like the housework is surmountable rather than just unachievable. Whether, but feeling like if I'm working, you know, X amount of time, I'm accomplishing my goal rather than right. feeling like I'm working and working I'm still not achieving what I want to it was like so instead of resting for 10 minutes why would yeah. I spend 10 minutes cleaning when it's not even going to make a dent but exactly 10 minutes of cleaning cleans your house when yes. you're you know in a better spot exactly yeah so it's it's such a snowball effect and you just have to I guess trust that it will be for you because that's what I have experienced and that's what so many other people have mm -hmm. experienced and I know that the more effort I put in it is just an exponential result and it has been so right. that's why I continue to feel motivated you know we went through our our school slash game closet which is our front closet 
and I've shown it on videos before because we don't have a lot of storage. We don't have a homeschool room like a lot of families do. That's where we keep all our homeschool supplies and our board games. We went through it for probably the 15th time or something and um, we got rid of more than we've ever gotten rid of. We got rid of so many games. Um, I think it, the more you do it and the more you feel the benefit, you will feel more confident about making decisions. Mm -hmm. You won't feel like doubtful about yourself. And you'll know like, that the reward is tangible. The word reward is tangible. It's real, and it is continuing to. What mm -hmm. is that word? Snowball. I want to. There's something else besides snowball. Momentum. That I'm, I, yeah, momentum is definitely one. But yeah. isn't there something in a bank when you like your money? Like oh, exponential um, growth. Exponential reward is what I have found to be true about decluttering mm -hmm. and minimalism. And like every or return on your dividends or whatever. Exactly, <laughs> and every little change I make. I feel like it's paying off in time and not only that but because I've been you know having like pretty good success with things I feel like okay I have this time what am I going to do now with that time and right. I feel more motivated how to can I make this time valuable. Uh, give me a return on my investment like how can I make this time work for me in my household yeah yeah I am we've discussed before Leah's a lot more like advanced in the journey and I'm more like I just said in the trenches so right now I am struggling some with it's not really motivation it's just it's the fact that you know the holiday we just had the holidays and everything and it's hard to find the time and sometimes that can be frustrating and lead to you know the motivation drag and we've been discussing how um, we were just discussing how it's it's hard when you haven't seen as many like I I was just saying if I'm going to take a project in my house to declutter sometimes that means I don't do the dishes that day and that's really rough and I have to do them sometime obviously <laughs> but I'm not at that place yet where my household is kind of not running itself but you know I'm not in that great place yet but I still have to do the projects. Otherwise, I'm not going to experience the rewards later of things being easier and having more time to do things like the dishes and the laundry mm -hmm. and everything. So what would you say to someone like me who's in that place where if I want to do a big or even a small decluttering project, something very basic day to day might suffer short term? I mean, I think you can give yourself the freedom to decide in the moment if that's worth the, you know, it's a benefit assessment I guess whether it's worth it at that moment because I'm also in a completely different stage of parenting and my you know my two oldest girls are like adults and they are you know they do the dishes for me so <laughs> and when I was in your so you was, have gotten your household so to work my for, house is just snapping it right does together. Run it so it's itself. not just that I have figured out this solution um but you a have lot put a of, lot I, of I front end work I have put a lot of work in, but I've also aged into a different stage and I'm enjoying that. Right. <laughs> and you will be there too. And I know when you're in the middle of that, it just feels like it's never, it's just hard to even picture but you remember, your life differently. You but remember, you remember the bags and bags of, of stuff by the Absolutely. door and you remember the stress of just, if I do this thing, this thing isn't right. going to get done. Mm -hmm. Or like, I have to just put the kids in front of the TV to do this, mm -hmm. this task or it's not going to get out of my house or whatever. Yeah. Um, so do you have any advice specifically for like, um, sh sh like how to keep going yeah. when it feels like it's more overwhelming than it, than it, like sometimes it feels more overwhelming than it does mm -hmm. simplifying mm -hmm. to get it out. Cause that's the hard part is just getting it out of your yeah. house. I mean, I know the minimal mom, uh, <laughs> we talk about her a lot, but, um, I know she's recently talked with the, what's the lady that does the other book? Dana. Oh, Dana Slob K. Comes, uh, slob comes clean. She talks about her method being when you're decluttering something, when you pull something out to immediately put it in the, the place where it needs to mm -hmm. be. So it, instead yeah. of creating these piles all over the floor, she kind right. of deals with each item at a time so you don't have that in progress disaster zone. Yes. And um, I don't know if that would help. I've mm -hmm. I've only done that a couple times because I really didn't learn about it until recently. But, um, have you ever done like a schedule like every Friday we're gonna go take the car and donate like did you ever were you ever in that place where you were so regular I mean, at a, you... there was a time when we were decluttering every day of the week because mm -hmm. Craig would come home and we would spend like I mean while I was cooking dinner he would be boxing things up or yeah. vice versa we were so very how did committed. you schedule just 
the simple like donation aspect how did you yeah. because that's really how you yeah. keep motivated is seeing the stuff right. leave you your house to, and yeah, seeing you need the to empty get it spaces out. Well, I mean, I put it right in my car, and mm -hmm. then just the next time we leave our house, we would, of course, we live very close to a do two donation centers, mm -hmm. one which I really like to donate to, the other one that we mentioned we're not a huge fan of, <laughs> but sometimes I will donate to there just out of convenience for myself, but um, it's not hard for us, but I do like to put it straight in the car, so at least it's, I mean, it's not going to be brought back in, right? right? So it's putting it off a little bit, but at least yeah. you know at that point you're going to get it right. to its final destination, whatever that is going to be. Yeah. And so, I know that we right now are like, we just finished a huge decluttering project, which was our entire downstairs and then immediately like trashed it with another decluttering project, <laughs> like the closet next yeah, door. And it's, it's like, just, yeah. Um, there's also Facebook groups uh, for, um, by resale. Re no, it's like free, free. Oh, it yeah. used to be called free cycle yeah. online. There used to be Craigslist and um, like no email buy. groups, no buy groups, I think. Yeah. So you can kind of just put things at your curb and just announce that you have stuff there. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done that with like just my Facebook friends said, I've got something I'm giving uh, away and it's going to be on my front porch. If you want it, message me for the address because I didn't want three people to come at once. Right. So I would just wait until a person messaged me and then that person mm -hmm. would get it. And I've been able to get rid of some big stuff that would be kind of a pain. And otherwise. that makes you feel good if you it's something that might be of monetary value that you don't feel like you have the time to sell. If I can give that something to a friend, that makes right. me feel great. That makes me feel better than yes. getting so I, the money. I mean, I have, I have given away stuff or sold stuff very, very low cost mm -hmm. that probably could have been sold for higher cost. But the benefit of getting rid of it right away is totally worth it mm -hmm. for me. So, yeah get it out of the house as quick as you can because yeah. otherwise it's just it's in your face you don't still. see the benefit and you, you also don't. have that mental you still keep the thinking burden. like do I really want to keep this or get you rid of this question or, yourself yeah the the decision fatigue mm -hmm. kind of snowballs instead of the decluttering mm -hmm. snowball <laughs> and that's what the minimal mom talks about quarantining stuff and putting it in boxes and that's yeah. something I've really never done because I don't have the space for it and I'm like I feel pretty confident I'm like well you don't have a garage I don't have a garage do so I don't property. have any in between space so I'm like if and you want to get rid of yeah, it yeah you don't want to put I stuff in your attic gone. yeah that's like no. taking stuff upstairs and like yeah yeah, yeah. that's so. like the opposite of out the door it's like putting it mm -hmm. deeper into your house right. <laughs> it is worse <laughs> And then it's giving more Smash effort to get it down. Smash it down into the dungeon. Smash like, it into the dungeon. Put it back up into yeah. the tower. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so the off. third one was <laughs> when your motivation how, changes. Yeah. What do you do when your motivation for minimalization changes? Which Alex and I are kind of going through a little bit of that right now because, and it's a good thing because we, Leah was just discussing with us earlier with the family you know she her motivation changed over time because she didn't realize how much she could be capable of being and doing mm -hmm. until it started taking effect and she had more time and mental energy right mm -hmm. yeah and just I, I think at the beginning I my goals were pretty low I just wanted things to not be messy I wanted things to be easier to keep track of and I was hoping my mental health would improve and all those things did happen but I didn't really expect that I would be so much more content with my home, um, with my stage of life, and just generally happier. Mm -hmm. Well, generally you've mentioned happier. your your home and how that wasn't ever really meant to be their forever home, right? <sighs> and they've talked about moving in vague terms for years now, right. and suddenly right. we kind of have heard you stop talking about moving. And yeah, we we still might move, but um, well, you would be perfectly content. I to would move. be content if I would be happy to move. <laughs> I would be content if we didn't move, and if this ended up being our our, our last house, it, it would be okay. I could totally cope with that idea. And I mean, that's a lot of growth, personal growth. Yeah. That, I think because it was it was it's not, not a large I didn't house. Feel that way. And <laughs> It definitely felt too too small for a long time and it feels really big now and that's with an extra child <laughs> who is you know getting a lot older and loud big. <laughs> and a dog a big dog yeah, yeah like they they used to have a beagle and now they have a we've upgraded our yeah, dog. a bernadoodle <laughs> I mean, yeah. Stuff. <laughs> yeah i mean you guys have gained so much square footage just from getting big pieces of furniture mm -hmm. out like the large square footage items and getting yeah. rid of just the stuff yeah. And I've been amazed at how much bigger your house feels. Yeah. And I think financially, you know, 
I, I didn't think at the beginning about the financial repercussions of minimalism because I was kind of focused on the here and now, like getting rid of things the money had already Let's been just spent. save my myself, my right, sanity. Right, save my sanity, and that that money was already gone. It was too late. I didn't really think. I guess I didn't really consider the fact that I would be shopping differently. Mm -hmm. But obviously, I needed to, or it wasn't sustainable. So, um, of course, we save money, and that I mean, the just do it like when my husband my husband does the bills, but when he does the bills is much less stressful because mm -hmm. it used to be kind of like a wild card. Like who knows what I ha might have spent because I wasn't <laughs> keeping track and I was, I would just spend a lot more quickly without thinking well, I think and I shopped caused, a lot. And, it yeah, was and just, you, you shopped therapeutically and I think that's absolutely. caused you to reevaluate like, well, maybe I should address my actual mental stress instead of just masking it with yeah. going shopping. Right. Um, yeah. And Alex and I started out kind of like we were just, it's like sink or swim, you know? with parenting and with I think that's the way a lot of people are at this phase of life oh, we survival. have a four and a half year old an almost three year old and a almost one year old it's just that's just where we are <laughs> and it is a struggle day to day just to get the dishes done sometimes um so going into that really my motivation just was I want to be able to play a game with my child when they ask me to play a game instead of saying I have to clean I, ha I say that to them all the time like I just have to maintain the house or cook for you that's all I do <laughs> so I wanted to be able to do more than that and that was my motivation but now we're talking about getting a smaller house we're talking about paying off our mortgage our smaller mortgage that we are going to probably have um, getting more property getting outside more Alex has been talking about being a uh, financially independent basically since I met him and now he's talking about realistically here are the numbers for how soon we could pay off our mortgage um, and if we moved to a smaller house, we could be debt free, you know, pretty reasonably quickly. And that's so huge for him because that's a lot of mental stress on him and on, I mean, so we're, we're like expanding our, our dreams really, because it feels like we can achieve more because we don't have so much stuff management and that affects your finances so much and so directly. Um, but that's exciting. I don't, I don't see a scenario where minimalism redirects your, where your motivation changes and it's not just a good thing mm -hmm. because it feels like stuff is like our, it's stuff is just getting bigger instead of our motivation getting smaller. It's like, mm -hmm. well, we can just achieve more and more. We can do what we want, even if it's just resting. <laughs> right. Even yeah. on a, so on a small, small basis, you know, you have, more opportunity in your day like you have more hours more freedom in your day and then on a bigger scale you still have you have more freedom as well right and, um and even if you choose to to go to a bigger house like i we might end up in a bigger house that doesn't mean that this is not we wouldn't still be minimalist and right then, i mean i think i could do that without you know i wouldn't have to fill it up with furniture i wouldn't have to go shopping go crazy even if we did make that change because we would you know it could still who knows? We've always wanted a big family. We were talking about this third baby being our last baby, and now it's like, well, who knows? One more, three more. Like we, we were cute it's, babies. It's, it's hard it's, to stop when they're that cute. <laughs> but it's it's crazy that my husband, who is you know usually the one stressed out about these things, is like, well, you know, who knows? Mm. <laughs> it's really nice to be in a place where you just say, you know, we're young. Who knows? And we could move. I'm not young, could, but like, I can still say, who knows? <laughs> Young, young dish is not the same as young. <laughs> Don't tell our viewers that you're old. What if they're older than you? Oh. Those were our three topics today. Um, and if you have any questions about how Leah has dealt with maybe changing motivations, I would love to hear those. I think that would be interesting. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments. And we really appreciate you watching our video. Do you have anything else to add? We'd love to have you subscribe. We're almost to 300 subscribers, which is a huge goal for us. And so if you can help us get there, that would be awesome. Also, if you have any topics you'd like us to cover in the future, we are, like every time we get together, we want to make a video together and we don't have really a master list of topics. And we sometimes kind of are like, you know, so if you have anything you want us to talk about, we would love to hear from you so that we can get some direct feedback. Uh, but other than that, thank you for watching. Thanks. Thank you for subscribing and liking our videos. Thank you for all the support. And we will see you in the next video.